What's going on? I'm FPL and Zagi, and today it's my team selection video for Double Game Week 28. Lots to talk about in today's video. We have a very important week coming up. I have already made two transfers. I've already taken a hit, and we still have over 24 hours to go until the deadline. Before we get into that, though, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are trying to hit 4,000 subscribers, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so. Looking back at game week 27, very quickly, I scored 75 points, which was slightly below the average. I think the main difference between a red average arrow and a green arrow for me in game week 27 was Trippier going off in the 52nd minute when Newcastle kept the clean sheet. Trippier ended on the one point here. So very frustrating. His replacement, Livermento, came on and scored a goal as well. So missing out on the clean sheet points, potential bonus points as well for Trippier in that match was really frustrating. Another key difference between a red and a green arrow for me was the fact that I benched Ariola again for his 13 points. Every double digit haul that Ariola has gotten this season, I have benched him for. Now, Raya has been a faithful servant to me. You can see in recent weeks, a six pointer against Sheffield United, a six pointer against Burnley, a six pointer against West Ham. Eight points against Crystal Palace, which is nice. Arsenal have been on a really good run lately. Just three non-clean sheets in the last six or seven matches. So I've been getting quite a few clean sheet points from Raya. But the problem is his ceiling is just about that six to eight point mark. He's not making anywhere near enough saves to get save points. You can see he made no saves against Sheffield United, one against Newcastle, none against Burnley, one against West Ham, even just the one save against Liverpool when they conceded a goal. The Arsenal defence is almost too good. And I think I've come to the point with David Raya that I, I think it's time for him to leave the team. Arsenal aren't projected to have a double game week. There's a chance that they might double in 34, but it's more likely that they double later on in the season in 37. And so I think with some mixed fixtures coming up, he of course can't play in game week 28. I think Raya's time in my team is coming to an end. I would rather have Saliba Gabriel than Raya in goals when his ceiling is really a clean sheet or a two-pointer. It feels a little bit like Edison at Man City. The rest of the team was fine. Foden with the 15 points against Manchester United. Haaland with the 12. Watkins, 13 points up front. I did bring Son into the team. For Richarlison, we did get some news pre-deadline that Richarlison was likely to be out for a couple of weeks. So I made that transfer of Richarlison to Son. I finished on 75 points and we are up to 40K in the world. So we did drop from about 34K to 40K. I think I got unlucky this week. Trippier going off the Areola penalty save in a 13-pointer. That was the difference, really, between a green arrow and a red arrow. But thankfully, even though it was a red arrow and my first red arrow in quite a while, it was only a small red arrow. And as I said, we've moved from 34K basically to where we were in game week 25. We are now at 40K. So that's how I went last week. Let's take a look at how the team is shaping up for double game week 28. Now, if you don't know, if you've been living under a rock, Bournemouth and Luton have a double game week this week. And you can see already I've made a couple of transfers in the team. I have brought Neto in from Bournemouth. So he has a double game week of Sheffield United at home and Luton at home. And in game week 30, when I'm really, I do need a goalkeeper in game week 30. If I kept Raya, I would have been having Raya against Man City. I've got Ariola, who's got Newcastle away. So I need a goalkeeper who's got a good fixture in 30. He's got Everton at home, Crystal Palace, and then Luton. So some really nice fixtures on the horizon for Bournemouth. They don't play in 29, but I am going to free hit in 29. The good thing with uh, Neto is that in the weeks that uh, Bournemouth have kept a clean sheet, which admittedly haven't been too many weeks, he has been able to get some bonus points. So in the 2-0 win against Burnley, he picked up a bonus point. He made five saves. He made five saves against City, four the week before, four against Fulham in 24. So he's been making enough saves to get some save points, which is encouraging. And if we go down to the other clean sheet that Burnley, uh, Bournemouth have had, I should say, against Fulham in game week 19, a 3-0 win. So three attacking returns at least. He managed to pick up two bonus points. So he's quite good for bonus 
Neto from the, uh, Bournemouth. And, and I think with the fixtures that he's got, both of them at home, he's got a good chance of a clean sheet. And if they don't keep a clean sheet, I'm hoping for some save points or potentially bonus points as well. Goalkeepers in double game weeks have a history of performing well. Not to say it's going to happen this time, but I am very hopeful. The other transfer is another Bournemouth defender. I've brought Zabani into the team. Now, I had my choice of any Bournemouth defender because I did sell Kieran Trippier. Reluctantly, I sold Kieran Trippier. I wanted to keep him because it looks like Newcastle will double in game week 34. We'll look at the fixtures from Ben Crellin in just a moment. But if I want to get Salah back in game week 31, I need to start downgrading players. And Kieran Trippier at close to 7 million, he was going to take a price drop, which meant I would have lost 0.1 on him. I did go early and I sold Trippier for Zabani. As I said, it was reluctantly, I might have to get Trippier back in if they double in 34, or maybe I can look at a different Newcastle defender. But I just thought that if I'm trying to get Salah back, I need every amount of budget that I can get. And selling Trippier for Zabani pockets me over 2 million. So I made that transfer. Why Zabani over Kirkes or over another Bournemouth defender? And the answer really is because I need a Bournemouth defender who's nailed. I don't think he's got much attacking return. If we look across uh, attacking potential, I should say, if we look across the season, he's XGI per 90 of, um, it's here, 0 0.04 is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Even in recent weeks, there's just nothing to speak of. 0 0.00, 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.09. So there's not much to speak of uh, in terms of attacking threat for Zabani. But if we look at the fixtures, they do have a double game week against Wolves at some point. They're projected to double in either 34 or 37. And I think there's every chance that I will keep a Bournemouth player in my team, a defender in my team, from now until the end of the season. And so if I'm going to be relying on a Bournemouth player... I need someone who's nailed. And Kirkes might be, and Smith might be in the short term. But once Bournemouth have all of their players back from injury, I don't think that they are nailed anymore. And so that's why I've gone for Zabani. I would love it if he was to fluke a goal or an attacking return in the double game week. But I've just gone for someone who's nailed there from the Bournemouth team. Now, I've still got a couple of flags in the team. Saka, I'm expecting him to be fine. It was just an illness, which is why he was subbed off against Sheffield United. Huang Yi Chan has been ruled out. Pedro Porro looks likely to be ruled out. I don't have much bench coverage. I've only got Charlie Taylor there. I do have Ariola. I'm benching Ariola. I'm expecting more Ariola play, uh, more Ariola pain. Uh, but that's the decision that I've made for this week. I think I just have to back Neto with the double game week. Kyle Walker. Now he's someone to discuss. I am a bit sick of the rotation. And he's got Liverpool this week. I'm not expecting a clean sheet. It's at Anfield. He's got Arsenal in game week 30, Aston Villa in game week 31. I don't see too many clean sheets on the horizon for Kyle Walker. And with Champions League as well, I think there will be rotation. Akanji's playing well. John Stones is playing well. So I think I'm likely to take another hit this week, which would be a minus eight. Uh, and that would be to sell Kyle Walker. Uh, for Alfie Doughty from Luton. We'll talk about that transfer in just a moment. I, I don't think that Luton have a great defense and I'm expecting them to concede, but Alfie Doughty's attacking stats are really, really good. So I am tempted to make another transfer to make it a minus eight, which is the first minus eight I've had all year. Um, and I wonder if I can see how many hits I've taken this season. So uh, one in game week 26, one in 23, one in 17, and that's it. So I've taken a grand total of three hits this season. I don't like taking hits, but I think in a double game week, it's a good strategy to try and be a little bit more uh, attacking and to try and target the double game week players. And I think this week, even though it is a Luton defender, I think Alfie Doughty outscores Kyle Walker by four points. I don't see, as I said, City keeping a clean sheet and it's a double game week. So I'm very tempted to take that additional hit. Another transfer could be to sell Huang Hee Chan for Cole Palmer. But in that scenario, I'm, I'm having to bench Foden. I'm having to bench Douglas Louise potentially. And there, the question around, does Palmer... Uh, outscore any of my other attackers by more than four points this week. I, I think that becomes a lot harder to answer. So the rest of the team, I think, looks fine. I think I will make one more transfer, and that is to sell Kyle Walker for Alfie Doughty. 
I think the stats are good. The underlying stats are good for him uh, and watching the games as well for Luton. He gets into some great positions. He delivers a lot of crosses. If he gets an attacking return, he's in a chance, in with a chance of getting some bonus points as well. So that's the team. Annoying to take, have to take the minus eight, but it is what it is. Let's talk now about fixtures uh, and what my chip strategy is going to be moving forward. All right, let's talk about the fixtures moving forward. Apologies that I'm cutting off some of the fixtures there in game week 28, but this is the updated spreadsheet from Ben Krellen, and I wanted to speak to it because I think it's changed the landscape in terms of what to expect, 34, 35, 36, and 37, and therefore, I think it's changed what the best chip strategy is moving forward. I, I I will say, I do think it's team dependent, and I think that's true. However, I think that for the majority of teams, one chip strategy is starting to emerge as probably the, the strongest, probably the most effective chip strategy. Now, if you're not on this trip, chip strategy, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm, I'm not saying that you need to change your plans because your team is probably set up in a different way. But I just think that if your team is quite general, quite template, and you're not entirely sure what chip strategy to go with, I think there is one emerging now as probably the strongest one to go with. And that is to free hit in game week 29 because game week 34 is the other week that people are looking at to free hit. However, with the Brighton result in Europe, losing 4-0 to Roma, they are expected to drop out of that competition. And all of a sudden, game week 34 is not looking like the big double game week we first anticipated. So if we look at game week 34, they're color-coded based on the likelihood of being a double game week. Arsenal uh, are projected to have Wolves and Chelsea in game week 34. However, that is an unlikely double, with Ben Krellen giving it a 1% to 33% chance of a double game week, so unlikely. Uh, let's move down. Bournemouth there with a double game week against Aston Villa and Wolves. That's a possible double game week with a 35 to 60% chance. But if you look at the exact percentage that he gives it elsewhere in his tweet, it's less than 50%. So it's closer to that 35% chance. Chelsea versus Man City, possible double game week and unlikely blank game week. So He's saying that that Chelsea Man City double for Brighton could go there in game week 34, but we don't have a percentage, but it's just a possible double game week, not probable. So again, I think we put that uh, as less than 50%. Moving down, Chelsea with a double game week against Brighton and Arsenal or Tottenham, unlikely, 1% to 33% chance. Crystal Palace, they do have a likely double game week, a 70 to 99% chance against West Ham and Newcastle. That is based off Newcastle losing in the FA Cup quarterfinal to Man City. That's just what people are projecting to happen. If that doesn't happen, then the double in 34 will change again. Everton with a possible double game week. Again, it's less than 50%. There is some information to suggest that that Liverpool game for Everton will go into game week 37 rather than 34. Fulham, unlikely blank game week, so they're likely to have just the one match. Liverpool with a less than 33% chance of a double, the same for Man City. Man United there with a possible double game week. Now, the percentage that Ben gives it elsewhere in the tweet is closer to 50%, maybe just above 50% expecting that United were to lose to Liverpool in the FA Cup. So United could go in there along with Crystal Palace as a likely double game week. The next likely double game week is for Newcastle uh, and also for Sheffield United. Tottenham with an unlikely double and an unlikely blank and Wolves again with an unlikely double game week. So game week 34, in terms of what's likely at this point for teams with a double game week would just be Crystal Palace, Manchester United, Newcastle, and Sheffield United. Just those four teams. I don't think I'm missing any others there. So just those four teams doubling in game week 34. Now, is that enough for a free hit? I'm not entirely sure. Now, the reason why I question whether it's enough for a free hit, because the more popular chip strategy, which I think is emerging as probably going to be the more effective one, is to use free transfers to dead end into 35 and or 36. Because you can see here that there's a possible double game week for Brighton and for Chelsea in either 35 or 36, potentially both, depending on how the fixtures land. And so I think what you could do is target the teams who are doubling in 34 with free transfers. Get Man United players in, get Garnacho 
Bruno Fernandes, Hoyland, perhaps maybe uh, Rashford, uh, get some Newcastle players in, get a, a Crystal Palace player in, and dead end into game week 34, 35, and then wild card out. And to target game week 37 with your transfers, oh, sorry, with your wild card for a bench boost. I just think that 34 at the moment, it seems to be trending towards having less and less double game weeks. And we might arrive at game week 34 with only one or two double game weeks. And there's even a chance that we arrive in 34 with no double game weeks. That is a low chance, but there is a chance that that could happen. So I think managers who are looking to wildcard 30, 31, they will find it immensely difficult to get through to 37 and bench boost. Because if you wildcard in 30, 31, you will have to have a plan to get some Brighton and some Chelsea players in for their double potentially in 35, 36. But then they might not double in 37, depending on what happens in 35, 36. So you can hear it in my voice. There's uncertainty around what the fixtures will look like. And wildcarding now, to me, is madness because you're wildcarding into a future that is so uncertain and unknown. Yes, you will do well in the short term, but wildcarding now, when 34, 35, 36, 37 is so up in the air, I think it will be very difficult. I think it will be very difficult to not be caught up by all of the teams who are wildcarding later and wildcarding closer to game week 37. Another reason why I like wildcarding 35, 36 is the teams that have or are likely to have a double in 34 also have good fixtures in 35. So if you're free hitting in 34, yes, you might have triple Man United and triple Newcastle, but then you won't have them the week after. And you might say it's Man United, it's Newcastle, but in 35, Manchester United have Burnley at home. Newcastle have Sheffield United at home. That's a great fixture. Even Crystal Palace have Fulham away. So the managers who are not free hitting in 34 and just using their free transfers will go into 35 with a really strong team and then wildcard out of that into 36, 37 and be ready to go for an effective bench boost. I just think that wildcarding 30, 31 is way too far away from the bench boost in 37. I think you'll have too many issues to deal with. You'll be spending transfers trying to target the blank game weeks. You'll be using your free hit in 34, but then not having a really strong team in 35. And if there's injuries, if there's suspensions to deal with, if there's rotation based on Europe, I think you might be in a really difficult position. Now, That's a strong opinion. It's just my opinion. I'm not always right, but that's just what I think looking at what the fixtures are here from Ben Krellen. Let me know what you think and let me know what you think uh, of your chip strategy, what your chip strategy is at the moment in the comment section below. All right, so let's jump on FPL.team and I'll talk to you about my transfers moving forward. So as I said, I think I will do the Walker to Doughty move. There's a slight temptation to do Hang Hee Chan to Palmer. I just don't think it's worth an additional minus four when Palmer doesn't have a double game week. Even though I will want Palmer for the long run when Chelsea have so many doubles to come. But I think I'll just do Kyle Walker to Alfie Doughty. I'm minus eight. I don't love it, but it's a double game week and it gives me the transfers that I've made. I'm getting an extra fixture with a goalkeeper. I'm getting two extra fixtures with the defender because Kieran Trippier is not playing. You could argue one over um, Charlie Taylor. I'm getting one more fixture with Alfie Doughty there. So I've given myself an additional three to four fixtures just based on my transfers. So I think that's fine, especially when the players who I would have had anyway have really difficult fixtures. We go across to game week 29. I'll free hit here. I'm not going to bother with a free hit draft at this point. Game week 30, the team looks okay. I'm hoping that Pedro Porro is back. I can bench Saliba against Man City, although I think if there's a chance the game is tight, I might just bench Alfie Doughty and play Saliba and hope that it's a nil-nil or maybe Arsenal are able to do what they did at the Emirates. And I think it was a 1-0 result in that match. So in game week 30, this might shock you, but I'm either going to roll the transfer or I think in game week 30, what I could do is downgrade Ollie Watkins for 
Alexander Isak, who's got West Ham at home. Now, I don't need to make that transfer straight away because Wolves at home is fine for Watkins. And if I'm thinking about Mo Salah, then maybe I just roll the transfer into game week 31. Wolves at home, I think I might just roll the transfer here. We go into 31 and I sell uh, Ollie Watkins for Alexander Isak. I sell Son for Salah with two free transfers, and I've still got 1.4 million there in the bank. I could take a hit. Uh, I, I've got a bit of an issue here with Douglas Louise playing Man City. Huang Hee Chan doesn't have a fixture. And then I guess if we go back to game week 30, then maybe the transfer that I make this week is to sell one of my midfielders. I could sell Huang this week for Cole Palmer. So let's just pretend that I made that move. He's got Burnley at home. I'm not sure which attacker I would bench here. Wolves at home is good for Douglas Louise. Saka's playing away against Man City. Foden's playing Arsenal at home. I don't know what I do here from a benching perspective, but let's say that I, I bench Phil Foden. We go into game week 31 uh, and I take a minus four. It becomes a minus four to get Salah in this week, but I can still afford that by downgrading Watkins to Alexander Isak. That's in game week 31. I roll the transfer in game week 32. Game week 33, I would sell Douglas Louise for Garnacho. And I roll that second free transfer. Bournemouth away. I've still got Foden, who's got Luton. So I've got some good fixtures for my attackers here. Defensively, I'm in shambles. Um, and maybe I need to look at my defense. But defenders are not scoring points at the moment anyway. Ariola and Neto, that's a conversation to have. But then we go into game week 34. And this is the double game week. So I would have two free transfers here. Uh, depending on what the doubles are going to look like. But I could use my two free transfers, maybe take a minus four or even a minus eight and to get as many double game week players as I absolutely can. That's looking pretty far out. The main points here is that I am strongly considering getting Salah back in game week 31. Um, if I don't go for Salah, I think the team overall looks a little bit stronger. But Salah at home to Sheffield United, it just feels too good to turn down. Even against Man United and Crystal Palace, I really like that for him. But it will depend on the confirmed double game week fixtures for 34 once we get the other side of the FA Cup quarterfinals uh, after game week 30. So if we just go back to game week 28, this is this week. Alfie Doughty, I am very tempted. Some good fixtures, Arsenal and Spurs in 30-31. Bournemouth in 32 is good, but then Man City 33, 34, they're not projected to double. It's a it's a transfer, I think, which looks good this week. Uh, it means that I don't have to play Kyle Walker, um, but I think my defense is going to be an issue from about game week 31 to game week 36 when I hit that wild card button. And it's probably something I'm going to have to address at some point with so many bad fixtures for defenders, even for Arsenal defensively, not great. When they've got Brighton away, Aston Villa at home, Tottenham away in 35. I don't love those fixtures. Man City away in game week 30 as well. So I don't love the defensive fixtures for my players post game week 30 but those are the moves that i'm looking at this week make sure you let me know in the comment section below what transfers you're making and as i said what chip strategy you're on i'll be back tomorrow for the deadline stream thanks so much for watching as always take care and i'll see you in the next video